Today, we will be talking about schistosomiasis, otherwise known as bilharziasis. So schistosomiasis is an acute and chronic parasitic disease caused by blood flukes, otherwise known as trematode worms, of the genus schistosoma. People become infected when larval forms of the parasite, released by freshwater snails, penetrate the skin during contact with infested water. Transmission occurs when people suffering from schistosomiasis contaminate freshwater sources with their excreta containing parasite eggs, which hatch in the water. So in the body, the larvae then develop into adult schismatomes. Adult worms live in the blood vessels where the females release eggs, and some of the eggs are passed out of the body in the feces or urine to continue the parasite's life cycle. So others become trapped in body tissues, causing immune reactions and progressive damage to organs. Now moving on to the epidemiology. So schistosomiasis is prevalent in tropical and subtropical areas, especially in poor communities without access to safe drinking water and adequate sanitation. And it is estimated that at least 90% of those requiring treatment for schistosomiasis live in Africa. There are two major forms of schistosomiasis, number one being intestinal and second neurogenital, and both are caused by five main species of blood fluke. So now moving on to parasite species and geographical distribution of schistosomiasis. So the causes for intestinal schistosomiasis include schistosoma mansoni, which is found in Africa, the Middle East, the Caribbean, Brazil, Venezuela, and Suriname. Number two, Schistosoma japonicum is found in China, Indonesia, and the Philippines. Schistosoma mekongi is found in several districts of Cambodia and the Lao People's Democratic Republic. Lastly, Schistosoma guianesis and related S. intercalatum can be found in rainforest areas of Central Africa. So Schistomansoni eggs are large and have a characteristic shape with a prominent lateral spine near the posterior end. And Schistosoma japonicum eggs are large and more rounded than the other species, and the spine is smaller and less conspicuous than other species. So urogenital Schistosomiasis is caused by Schistosoma hematobium, and that is found in Africa, the Middle East, and Corsica, which is in France. So you can see the Schistosoma hematobium egg is large and bears a conspicuous terminal spine. Schistosomiasis mostly affects poor and rural communities, particularly agricultural and fishing populations. So unfortunately, women doing domestic chores in infested water, such as washing clothes, are also at risk and can develop female genital schistosomiasis, and inadequate hygiene and contact with infected water can make children especially vulnerable to infection as well. Okay, now moving on to the symptoms. Symptoms of schistosomiasis are caused by the body's reaction to the worm's eggs. And intestinal schistosomiasis can result in abdominal pain, diarrhea, and blood in the stool. So liver enlargement is common in advanced cases and is frequently associated with an accumulation of fluid in the peritoneal cavity and hypertension of the abdominal blood vessels. In such cases, there may also be enlargement of the spleen. Here you can see a periportal fibrosis on ultrasound scanned, and the classic sign of urogenital schistosomiasis is hematuria, which is blood in urine. So here you can see fibrosis of the bladder and the ureter, and also kidney damage are sometimes diagnosed in advanced cases. So bladder cancer is another possible complication in the later stages. So in women, urogenital schistosomiasis may present with genital lesions, vaginal bleeding, and pain during sexual intercourse and nodules in the vulva. And in men, urogenital schistosomiasis can induce pathology of the seminal vesicles, prostate, and other organs. This disease may also have other long-term irreversible consequences, including infertility. In children, schistosomiasis can cause anemia, stunting, and a reduced ability to learn, although the effects are usually reversible with treatment. 
Chronic schistosomiasis may also affect people's ability to work and in some cases result in death. And urogenital schistosomiasis is also considered to be a risk factor for HIV infection, especially in women. The number of deaths due to schistosomiasis is difficult to estimate because of hidden pathologies such as liver and kidney failure, bladder cancer, and ectopic pregnancies due to female genital schistosomiasis. Moving on to diagnosis, schistosomiasis can be diagnosed through the detection of parasite eggs in stool or urine specimens, antibodies and or antigens detected in blood or urine samples are also indications of infection. Prevention and control. So the control of schistosomiasis is based on large-scale treatment of at-risk population groups, access to safe water, improved sanitation, hygiene education, and snail control. The World Health Organization strategy for schistosomiasis control focuses on reducing disease through periodic, targeted treatment with praziquantel through the large-scale treatment or preventive chemotherapy of affected populations. And groups targeted for treatment are number one, preschool aged children, number two, school aged children in endemic areas, three, adults considered to be at risk in endemic areas, and people with occupations involving contact with infested water, such as fishermen, farmers, irrigation workers, and women whose domestic tasks bring them in contact with infested water. And finally, number four, entire communities living in highly endemic areas.